You haven't got the nerve to kill me. Even if it means your freedom and theirs. Don't be too sure. You've underestimated me before, mm. and here I am with a knife at your throat. <laughs> yes, yes, you were very clever. The way you kept me from knowing that you, you'd gotten your sight back. A nice touch. But it's all for nothing, Raymond. I don't see it that way. I see you giving certain orders and letting us go. All of us. <sighs> I'm sorry. Your eyes may be stronger, but your heart is still weak. Oh. Mm. For the last time, Roland, if you think I'm bluffing... I know you are! Even with the crown at stake, you can't bring yourself to kill your own brother. Can you? I've got a surprise for you, dear brother. After what you've done to me and the people I love, oh, yes, I can kill you with pleasure. Lady, this is where they told me to bring. Of course. That's me, your average Mandoran delivery boy. I don't believe it. <laughs> You're all... I'm so happy oh. to see you. Oh, hello, Doctor. Hello, Mrs. Burton. I know that friend is here, so save your breath. Excuse me, Doctor. Look, do you gonna tell her that I am here? Or should I start shouting again? Hey, man. Nice surprise. What are you doing here? Where's your coat? It's in my closet. Where do you think it is? Uh, Mrs. Verdon, don't you have better things to take care of right now? You gonna tell me what this is all about? Grab your coat, Ms. McGillis. Come with me and I'm gonna change your life. Here's what to do when you don't find the rainbows in this time. Here's where you go when it looks like the rain won't end. Don't cry. I'll give you tomorrow. Let me be the one to share it with. And each day that follows. Cause we only have one night to live. Your threats won't work, Raymond. You'll never follow through with them. And if you're wrong, Roland, a fatal mistake. But I've never been wrong with you. No matter our differences, our conflicts, we're still brothers. Nothing can break that bond. But well, that's some bond. What kind of brotherly love is it Dwayne. that lets you steal your brother's birthright? Dwayne, just shut up. Dwayne, 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 keep back. Dwayne! <laughs> <laughs> A little late, ladies. Dorian, over by the door. Move! Well, if you really think we're afraid of you, you the sword just pick one of you. Uh, stay back, Megan. No, I'm not I mean it. Stay right back, you too, Dorian. I won't have you risking your lives for no reason. No reason. The man has got a knife at your throat. He's going to kill you. No, he won't. Will you, Roland? Will you? No, he doesn't answer because he knows I'm right. If I die, there'll be an election, and my brother's never exactly been the people's choice. Now, the only way he can become king is if I abdicate. Isn't that right, Roland? Huh? I'm much more valuable to you alive than dead. You've got me there, Raymond. You can't kill me because of your morality. I can't kill you because of political realities. There's only one thing to do. Raymond! Raymond can't help you. No one can help you. Maybe I can't kill the prince, but I can still kill you. Well, were you able to leave the ambassador's residence? No, oh, Roland lets me come and go as I please. I mean, he knows that I'm going to continue to cover for him as long as he has my mother held hostage. And my sister. 
Talk about feeling powerless. If Raymond isn't able to rescue Megan and Dorian, then I don't think we have any other choice. I think I have to go through with that wedding. What if Roland goes back on his word after the wedding and decides to finish us all off? It's a chance we have to take. Here's to Raymond coming up with some plan to get Megan and my mother into safety before that happens. Well, right now, I'm just hoping that someone is going to do something else to save us. Bo? If he picked up on the hidden message I left at the press conference, maybe he can do something. What if he didn't? That's easy. <laughs> then my life, or what's left of it, is over. All right, could I get one of those, too? Uh, it was a real long trip. Oh, <laughs> good to see you, Bo. <laughs> what are you two doing here in Mandora? Uh, actually, we've come for a wedding. Yeah, the royal wedding. We wouldn't miss that for the world. Sarah's and the princess. I'm sorry, but when I heard about it, I just couldn't believe it. Well, don't feel all alone, because I don't believe it either. What we do believe is that Sarah is being kept here against her will, and that she's being forced to marry Raymond. Yeah, and if it's true, then we're going to get her out of this country, unmarried and unharmed, along with anybody else who might be in danger. Court, if you're insinuating that I'm in some kind of trouble, I'm not. But at the same time... At the same time, what? Deborah, if you know anything about Sarah, you've got to tell us right now. Well, it's not about Sarah. It's about Megan and Dorian Lord. I knew that they were involved in this somewhere. Go on, Court. Well, I don't think they're involved in Sarah's wedding plans, but I, I just know what I saw. What did you see? Well, I was at the ambassador's residence the other night. I was on my way back from the palace ball, and I saw Dorian being forced into a car. And I spoke to Cassie about it, and she said it was some sort of trial run in case her mother ever got abducted by terrorists. What? Look, I know it seems implausible, but at the time I believed it until Cassie said that Megan and her mother had gone on a skiing vacation. Now, see, that's the thing. Why would the ambassador from our country all of a sudden go on vacation just before the coronation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back up a minute here. You said that Dorian and Megan went off skiing together? Yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it? especially given the fact that I've heard that those two aren't exactly bosom buddies. You should have heard them uh, tracing the, the little uh, barbs when I was at the airport. If all this happens... Yeah, don't waste time with the stage hands. We have to rehearse tonight. Tonight? What have, did you say? Haven't you been told? We're doing an encore performance at the palace. Well, now that you know, why don't you get to work? Wait. I've never seen these two before. Who are you and what are you doing here? I'm not going anywhere with you until you, t you translate into <laughs> English. What do you mean you're going to change my life? Well, I'm not going to tell you, Brenda. Dan, come on. I'm going to show you. No, that's not fair. you got to give me a hint, at least. No, no, no. You're just going to have to come along quietly, ma'am. You're serious about this, aren't you? You bet. I'll drag you kicking and screaming if necessary. <laughs> okay, I'll go, but I can't right now. I'm sorry. Well, I don't know about this. I can't. I, I don't have, know about I, this, I, I just started unloading all of my stuff out of my closets, and, and I, it'd probably take me another hour or so. You can promise me you won't stand me up? I promise. I promise! All right, here. I'm going to give you the address of the place. And I want you to meet me there in one, count it, one. One. Hour. I will. OK. This better be good, Dan. <sighs> will be. You kidding me? Let's get to those closets. OK. All right. See ya. I'll see you later. All right. Well, Miss Verdon, I'm going to go upstairs and finish my chores, and then I'm going to be going out for a little bit, OK? Uh, where is it you're going, Brenda, in case I need to get in touch about the baby? Oh, that's... I'm not going to be gone that long. Don't worry about it. Anyway, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a secret. Mrs. Verdon, I thought you should know uh, Brenda is going out somewhere this afternoon with Dr. Dan Wallach. Did you say where she's going? No, I don't know the where or why. All right, I'll be right there. Whatever Brenda's plans are, I'm about to change. Hello, Brenda. 
Linda, I hope I haven't caught you at a bad time. Well, actually, I am just getting ready to run a bunch of errands so that I can make it to an appointment. Appointment? Well, I'm afraid you just have to cancel that. I beg your pardon? Well, I can't take no for an answer. Not after moving heaven and earth to get these. Front row center for today's matinee of the circus. Today? Today. I realize it's uh, not much notice, uh, but the circus has been sold out for months, and uh, these came available, and I, I, I jumped at the chance. Yeah, Michael, I... Uh, no, you don't have to thank me, because Stephen is going to love this. All the lions, the elephants, the daring young man on the flying trapeze. And I think you're going to want to be there to watch your son enjoying his very first circus. So where is he? Let's bundle him up uh, and get going. We don't listen, want to miss a thing. It's so thoughtful of you, Michael, but today it's a bad day today. I'm not going to be able to do it. Brenda. This is the hottest show in town. I hear that some kids are selling their own pets to see this circus. Yeah, I, I, I maybe. <laughs> but uh, I have this appointment, and it's much too late for me to call and cancel it. I can't do it. I'm sorry. Well, only trying to show your son a good time. I know you are. Hey, why don't you take Stephen to the circus? Miss Burden can take my ticket, and then that way, when the circus comes back to town another time, I'll make sure that I'm there. Don't you do that? That's a good idea. Well, uh, okay, and actually, have a and have fun. Whatever you decide Brenda? to do, Miss Verdon, have fun. Bye. Shall I get the child ready, Mr. Grant? The hell can she be doing with Dan Wallach? That's so damned important. Let her go, Roland. She's nothing to you. No. But she's something to you. It's your decision, Raven. You can make this easy, or you can make it difficult. Don't do it, Raven. Very no difficult. What he says, you can't trust him. She's right. He's not going to kill her. You just refuse to go along, and he'll have to back down. A judgment call. Isn't that what the Americans say? But I know all about your judgment. It's based in weakness. Oh, shut up. If you're going to kill me, then just kill me. Don't make me listen to you. She's brave, Raymond. Braver than you. You had your chance to kill me and save the throne and save them, too. But you couldn't do it. The king should have the heart of a lion, not a house cat. If you would just recognize that, you might follow my plan with a sense of relief. Think of it, Raymond. No more the burden of command. You just marry Sarah. Quietly abdicate. Allow me to take over, and then I won't have to hurt such a little thing as Megan. Don't let him threaten you. All right, Roland. Let her go. You win. No, Raymond. I'll do what you want and marry Sarah. After the abdication, the crown will be yours. I'm so glad we had this little chat. There's only one thing I ask. A moment alone with Megan for a final farewell. <laughs> Ever the romantic. As only a storybook prince can be. But this is reality. You can have your moment. But you won't be alone. God! Your Highness! You will watch them with your life. They won't. Forgive me, but... Well, I'm sure people tell you this all the time. You look just like William Hurt. I asked you a question. What are you doing in our rehearsal hall? That's exactly my question, Heinz. I mean, these stupid guys, they just pushed this in when I was concentrating at the bar, and I hurt my... The, what is it? It's my ankle. Oh. See what you've done, idiots? Look, don't blame them. They're only doing their job. It's just that I really don't think I can rehearse. Maybe you should see the company doctor. What are you doing here? Go put those costumes away. I'll be all right. It's just that I don't think I can rehearse right now. I'll call you when I feel better. Are you quite sure? Yes, positive. We owe you one. 
That was great, there, but it was really nice. But all I did was get you some time. Now, we've got to think quickly before someone else realizes you don't belong. Okay, what we have to do, we have to find Sarah and get her to a safe place, and then we better work on finding Dorian and Megan. Okay, right. well, Sarah's in the palace, and I'm sure we can find a way to get her out. All right, if that's the fact, then uh, I think this is a one-man job. Whoa, whoa. I'm not going to let you go alone no, on this that's, thing. That's the only way to do it. Gord, I can sneak in there. You stay out in the van with the engine running so you can get us the hell out of here, okay? While we wait outside in the van. Uh, Deborah. Do I have to prove myself again? I know my way around here. You need me. Well, she's right. Yeah, listen, I'll change and then we'll all meet at the van. <sighs> okay, we'll both go and wait in the van. But then what? Well, then... You keep your fingers crossed. And you better do the same thing, because if our luck holds, we're gonna be out of this country by tonight. Or you're there. Deborah, this is perfect. We can see all the comings and goings from the castle from right here, just like Bo said. Nice work. What is it? What's wrong? This is all my fault. Hey, Deborah, what are you talking about? What did you do about this? Nothing. That's absolutely it. I saw the whole thing. I saw Dorian kidnapped, Cassie trying to help, but I couldn't believe it with my own eyes. Wait a minute. Just listen to me, all right? Cassie was in danger. She was worried about her mother. That's why she had to lie to you, Deborah. She had to get you to believe that you would imagine the whole thing. Well, that's just it. I fell for it. If Cassie was trying to call for help, I didn't get any of it. Deborah, come on. Look, Cordy, don't try and make it any better than it is. Look, I should have called Landview when I sensed there was danger. But I didn't want to seem like some hysterical female. You've got to stop second-guessing yourself. We're going to get to the bottom of this. If it's not too late. Bo and I are here now. What are you doing here? Oh, man. Can, can, uh, where's the bathroom? What? The bathroom. I just delivered a whole stack of boxes that tall to the kitchen. It's all smoked ham from the, the Royal Smokehouse. Anyway, they said there was a place I might be able to wash my hands, and then I just said, I guess I got lost. Am I headed in the right direction? You're going to prison if you don't leave. That's what I'm trying to do. But there's more twists and turns in this whole place than my grandmother's braids, so maybe maybe you could tell me, where's the, the service? Ah, you're it's... an imbecile. You go down to the hall, and then you make a right. You know, I'm not perfect, I'm right. I'm not smart. Well, well, why don't we just step outside where we'll have a little privacy? Megan, he's not going to get away with this. Of course he is. Shh, keep your voice down. Dorian, can't keep him occupied forever. I heard you talk to Roland. I know what you said. You said you had no choice but to marry Sarah. We well, had a knife at your throat. I would have said anything to protect you. That doesn't mean I'm going to go through with it. You have to. He's gone this far to try and overthrow you. I'm sure he won't stop until he's resting on the throne of Mendora. Now, listen to me. Roland's thought of almost everything, but the key word is almost. As Machiavellian as he is, he's made one serious oversight. And what's that? Come closer. Let the guard think we can't keep our hands off each other. Oh, well, why would he think that? Okay, well, but, you know, they're not going anywhere with you guards right outside the front door. <laughs> oh, my, my, it's amazing. You just don't have a bad side. You know, a very dear friend of mine is a casting agent in Hollywood, and I know she's just been looking for someone like you. You could do the next big chill, too. Oh, yes, absolutely. My sight's getting stronger, remember? Yes, I know that. I'm very happy for you, but Roland knows that as well. Megan, I know where we are. So do I. We're locked up in a castle. Yes, but I know which castle. Don't you see? I can go back to Marienstein, pretend to go along with Roland, right up until the wedding, and then, without my brother knowing it, I can have my men come back and rescue you and Dorian. Well, do you really think that's going to work? I mean, Roland has his own forces as well. Oh, mercenaries, mostly. The men who rally to me will be, will be fighting for their country. Now, I, I have, there's not a doubt in my mind that we can set you free. And then all of Roland's threats will be meaningless, and it'll finally be a fair fight. Just me and my brother. And may the better man win. That's 
It's no contest. I should have faith in you. Yeah, you should. Just because I'm half blind and outnumbered ten to one, you think I'm going to let that stop me? No, I've got something that Roland can never have. What's that, dimples? <laughs> well, that too. But I was referring to a certain gorgeous creature named Megan Gordon. Oh, yes, that commoner. Oh, yes. But she's my commoner. And I love her much too much to give up my throne for anyone but her. You know, Roland's right about one thing. I am a storybook prince. And I'm proud of it, and you know why? Because storybooks always have happy endings. Eyes closed. They're closed. I'm going to count them three and then I'm going to open them. All right, okay. One, ready? Two, three. Ta da! Well, come on, what do you think? Talk to me. I think he brought me to an abandoned warehouse, Dan. <laughs> no, it's a loft. Now, look around, check it out, give it the white glove inspection, the whole thing. No, not inspection. until you tell me. What is this all about here? You know, those windows, those windows are real nice. And when it's a clear day and you open them up, you can see all the way down to the river. Yeah? It's a great way to wake up in the morning. Whose place is this, Dan? It's yours and Stevens. Well, you know, of course, that is if uh, you decide to uh, sign the lease. Well, so this place is for, is for rent. Well, more like a sublet. See, John Russell owns this place. And now that he's the new acting DA, he uh, wants to live closer to the courthouse. So he's looking for somebody to uh, rent it out. Looking for the right person. That right person is you. You didn't. Oh, I did. You didn't. Oh, I did. No. Oh, I did. <laughs> now, I kept my word, Miss McGillis. I told you I'd find you a place to live, and I did. Now, what could be wrong with this place? It's a real nice space. It is. It's, it's mm -hmm. got a lot of light. Mm -hmm. Nice room. Nice location. Yeah, nice you're just kitchen. a few blocks away from the hospital. Stephen's got his playground. Do a lot of shopping down there over at the corner. And that shopping mall coming in. They're saying that this is going to be the next uh, great neighborhood in Landview. That's what they say. Yeah, well, they also know that this is way out of my league. Do you know how much an apartment like this would rent for, Dan? You see, that's the sweet thing about this. John doesn't want to make any profit. He just wants to keep the place in condition. So he's not going to charge you a penny more than Michael's charging you over at the cottage. You're kidding me. No, I'm not kidding. You want to, you want to call him? That sounds too good to be true. Well, it's not too good for you or Stephen. Now, the place is yours if you want it. Well, it's just happening kind of suddenly. I'm just, I'm gonna have to think about it, okay? You're gonna have to think about it. All you gotta do is talk to John, sign the check, and you can move in today. Today? Why not? I'll help you. Come on, Brenda, what do you say? I know a little something about the man you're going to marry, and I don't mean Raymond. If there's anyone that can come in here and save the day, it's Bo. That's what I keep telling myself. One way or another, it's going to work out. You'll see. I couldn't agree with you more, Cassie. One way or another. There's a custom we have in my country. A man usually knocks before he comes into a woman's room. You might want to try it sometime, Norland. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just so pleased to see my brother's bride-to-be spending time with our friend. Correction. Sarah's a friend, your brother's a friend, but you are not a friend of mine. Well, we'll just keep that our secret, Cassie. Now I need to have a little wedding chat with my future sister-in-law in private. It's all the same to you. I think I'll stick around. No, it's all right. Go ahead. I'll be okay. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm fine. He can't hurt me. I'm the blushing bride, remember? All right, but I'll be back. You might thank me. <laughs> thank you. 
thank you. For letting you see someone from home. Someone to help you while away the hours till the big day. You see, Sarah, I'm not the monster that you think I am. I want the crown of Mendora because I deserve it. And you, my dear, are going to make it all possible. Take your hands off of me. You see, Roland, I don't think you're a monster. I think you're a fool. Because even if you make me go through with this wedding, someone is going to realize that it's just a hoax and they're going to come to prevent it. Prophetic words. Someone already has. Your hometown lover has shown up in Mendora. Bo? Bo. Now there's a name to conjure with. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you that he'd come, that he'd realize it was all a hoax, and that he'd come to stop it? He's really been quite clever. Managed to come into Mendora without being recognized. <laughs> but when he arrived in the capital, he made the mistake of contacting your ballerina friend. Deborah? I can't believe that she'd ever turn him in. No, no, she, she didn't turn him in. It was her dancing partner, Heinz, a loyal patriot. Sarah, I must tell you, even though Bo has found you, he can't rescue you. You've already underestimated him once. He'll reach me. Oh, no, I'm counting on that. Yes, I'm counting on that, you see. But when he does, you will do exactly as I tell you. No, I won't, Roland. Actually, I'm suddenly through taking orders from you. Well, you'll take this one. Because if you don't, and your sister will never be able to be the maid of honor at your wedding. She'll be dead. Well? It's nice. It's nice. Yeah. It's nice. Yep. It's perfect. It is perfect, okay? <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> Oh, you are intent on getting me out of Michael Grant's place, aren't you? Well, I'd be the first one to admit that. But you were the one who said if I found you the right place, the right price. I said that I would consider moving if you found the right place. Consider? Well, you've seen and you've considered. I don't think you're going to find a better deal than this. Well, I don't know. It's just I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to think about it a little bit more. Hmm. Is it that you're uh, getting a little comfortable over at the cottage and you don't want to move? Of course not. And what do you want? I don't really know what I want right now. I mean, Michael's pulling in me in one direction and you're pulling me in the other direction. I'm starting to find it kind of hard to figure out what's right for me and Stephen, really. Brenda, look, I don't mean to pressure you. You know I that. Know, I'm you just know. concerned. I know. You just want to help me and so does Michael. He just wants to help me, too. It's just, I, don't you guys ever think that maybe I could figure this thing out on my own, you know? Don't answer yeah. that. I don't know. Stop it. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm, let me. I'm just gonna go by myself and look around for a little bit. Okay, just me, myself, and I. I'll be right back. You know, you're just deluding yourself. I do not see the prince storming the castle to rescue you. Yeah, well, it's not over until the fat lady sings. Raymond promised me a happy ending, and I believe him. Oh, poor Megan. Don't poor Megan me. Raymond is a man of his word. All right, maybe he is. But if he doesn't do what Roland asked him to do, then you and I are going to pay for his defiance with our lives. And if he does, and he marries Sarah, well, then Roland becomes king. And he won't have any need for us. So we're goners either way. Oh, well, it's a real pleasure being locked up in a dungeon with you. Excuse me, it's not a dungeon, it's a tower, and I'm just being a realist. Fat lady's going to sing all right at our funeral. I swear, if you don't stop talking about death and dying, I'm gonna... I'm... What? Kill me? Yes, kill you. I don't want to die. Neither do I, Megan. Neither do I. Tell you right after we have our first grandbaby, we gotta make tracks. No, I. 
I'm, I'm not going with you. You have to leave now. No, no, we're both gonna leave together. I've got it all arranged. I'm gonna get you so damn far away from this place that Ed Roland can never find you. Come on. No, look, I, I don't know what makes you think I'm leaving the palace. I don't know what makes you think I'm afraid of Roland. I'm marrying his brother. I thought I made that perfectly clear to you in the letter. Now, would you please Jeff, leave? Would you forget this act? It's me. I'm here now. I'm gonna protect you. I'm never gonna let anybody try to bust us apart again. But we've got to get out of here before they find us. Come it's on. It's typical. Sarah, what? You're just like all the rest of the Buchanans, aren't you? Stubborn, arrogant. Do you really think you're so special? You're, you're, you're so incomparable that I could never love anyone else but you. Why are you saying that? You know, and I have something else for you, Bo Buchanan, and I hope you listen to it and I hope you take it to heart. It's that high and mighty attitude of yours that made me stop loving you in the first place. What the hell are you And there's you something talking? else while we're on the subject. Compared to the son of Asa Buchanan, the prince of Mentora, he respects me. He listens to me, but you... You think just because your daddy tripped in some oil wheel that you can command people's feelings and their emotions where well, you can't, not with me, all right? So it's over. Do you understand that? I'm going to say it again so you hear me. It's over, all right? And if you ever cared one shred for me, you will just walk out that door. Well, I guess if that's the way you feel about this, then there's really nothing to say. What are you doing sitting on the floor? Waiting for you. So tell me, uh, how was the tour the second time around? Better. Mm -hmm. Much, much better. I mean, the place... Could use some color and maybe yeah. some curtains and, I don't know, the windows and the ceilings. I mean, it needs some work, but... Who am I kidding? This place is perfect, Dan. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so that mean you're going to take it? I don't know. I'm going to have to think about it, I think. You have to think about it. Yeah. More thinking. You don't let up, do you? No, I don't let up. Because I won't. And I can't. No, I don't understand. Why is it that all of a sudden it's become your personal quest to get me out of Michael Grant's cottage, huh? Because, um... You don't want to know. Yes, I do. Come on now, talk to me. I want to know what this is all about. It's about... Brenda, I'm afraid. You afraid? I don't buy that. Brenda, I'm not afraid for me. I'm afraid for you. I'm afraid for you. Living over there with Michael is going to lead you into something, something that is just not right for you. I told you, I have made it perfectly clear to Michael right from the very start. Brenda, do you think that that matters? to a man like that. It matters to me, and that's what counts. I live there, I pay rent, Michael's my friend, and that's it. Yes, for you, for now. Brendan, when that man has you so close like he does right now, he is not going to give up. You know, when I had... When I had to give you up to my father, I was gonna do that. Brenda, I was gonna do that for Dad, for you, and for Stephen. And I would have gone on with my life. But I am damned if I am going to lose you to Michael Grand and his all-concerned, greedy ways, Brenda, because I love you too much to that to happen. I'm sorry.
the only time you ever said anything is you were really drunk. I know. I know I was drunk. I was stupid. And I just kept hoping that... Hoping that... You were hoping? Were you? Yeah. I just didn't think that it was possible. It's not just possible. The love that I feel for you... The love that I've always felt for you. It's heart and soul to me. any harder than it already is, would you just go? Sarah, I just wanted to ask. I didn't realize you had company. Uninvited company. You surprised me. Personally, I loathe surprises. Perhaps you'll introduce me to your unexpected guest. Oh, I can introduce myself. Bob Buchanan. The jilted lover. Interesting choice of clothes. Thank you. Because you must be a second banana around here, no, huh? Don't. No, no, no. It's, he's right, sir. I'm Rowan Hohenstein, younger brother of Prince Raymond. Well, you have to pardon me if I don't curtsy. <laughs> Mr. Buchanan, I, I don't blame you for coming all the way to Mendora in pursuit of your lost love. Even, even sneaking into the palace to find her. I'm sure my brother would do the same thing if he lost Sarah. Well, I guess we'll find that out. No, no, I guess we won't. You see, Sarah and Raymond have developed a deep commitment to one another. Even Sarah's sister, Megan, has come to realize that, hasn't she, Sarah? Yeah. That's what I was trying to tell you. My life is here with Raymond. And you would just be doing everybody a big favor if you would just turn around and leave quietly. Yes, that's exactly <clears throat> what you mean. Hmm? I'm not the type of guy that's going to beat his head against a wall. Even a palace wall. Women. You, uh, you have a good life with your prince. A wise decision. Now, no more phony speeches. Let's go! Oh, uh, watch out! I passed out here. Hey, hey! Let go of Just get your hands off! Oh. Just... Oh, stop it! Please don't hurt him! Is that all the harder you ladies can hit? Oh. Enough! I want him fresh for his real punishment. You know what to do. Go on. Liar! Liar! You told me you'd let me talk him into it. You told me you wouldn't hurt him. You have no one but yourself to blame. If you've been more convincing when you told him that you didn't love him, then he would have believed you and he would have left under his own power. As it stands, you've not only jilted poor old Bo, you've signed his death warrant. Why is this taking so long? I mean, Bo said he was just going to go in there and try and find Sarah. Shh. Oh, thank God, Bo's alive. Is he telling him back? Finds it. Well, what do we do now? Let's follow those goons. I'm sure they're going to lead us to Megan and Dorian. Smooth. I'll try.
Tomorrow, Tony and Angela meet a strikingly similar couple who get engaged, leaving them to wonder about the state of their union on Who's the Boss? Then Kevin and the other members of the boys' eighth grade glee club struggle to find their voices in preparation for the spring sing on the Wonder Years. And Jackie's new love affair has the girls feuding on Roseanne. After, Hayden fears the new university president is an old girlfriend he once dumped on coach. Anna picks up Jonathan's trail of clues. Only Julian stands between her and the truth. Stay tuned for General Hospital following an ABC News Brief next.